Hello, and welcome to another sample problem. Um, today we're going to be working with uh, freezing point depressions and boiling point elevations. And so what we have here is a problem that is actually two problems in one. I figure I'd uh, try to kill two birds with one stone. Um, it's going to ask you for, uh, it's going to use a freezing point depression, and it's also going to use a boiling point elevation. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, deal with this one. If you look at this problem, it says, what would be the freezing point of a solution made by mixing 27 grams of acetone, whose formula is C3H6O, in 200 grams of water? Then the second part of the question is, what about its boiling point? So we're going to look for the freezing point, and we're going to look for the boiling point. Okay. So uh, first thing to remind you is that there are a couple of equations that we're going to be uh, using, and that is that the freezing point depression, delta T subscript F, is equal to Kf times the molality of the solution. And for boiling points, the boiling point elevation is equal to delta T B, that's the boiling point elevation, and that's going to equal to Kb times the molality. A um, couple things that we need to know here, and that is that Kf is a um, kf is a number that we can look up and i'm going to look it up right now kf for wa for uh, water is 1.86 and for uh, kb we have 0.512 right, so let's write that down i had looked it up on another book right here not able to show you because this only records one page at a time. Uh, Kf is 1.86 degrees Celsius per mole. Okay. Remember that this is for water. And that's because water is a solvent. So you look up the Kf for a solvent. And, let's get rid of this done here. Um, we also looked up the Kb. And the Kb for water, I look up, was 0 0.512 degrees Celsius per mole L. And once again, this is for water, which is the solvent. So we're going to use these two equations over here, and we're going to use these Kf values to go into those equations. These are the numbers that we're going to put into this here and into this. Now what we want to do is figure out how the freezing point changed we know that for water, the freezing point is 0 degrees Celsius, and the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. So we want to see how much is going to change from that. Okay, And so that's what, that's what we're going to be doing here in this problem. Now, um, let's go ahead and uh, use these problems down here. I want to go ahead and move this down and scroll up. Uh, if you want to look at these equations again, you can go ahead and uh, you know rewind the video a little bit. But I'm going to move this up here so that I can go ahead and uh, actually do the calculations on here. Okay. Um, so we've got a solution with 27 grams of acetone being our solute. It's being dissolved in 200 grams of water. Okay, so that's the solvent. Um, so what we need to do is first figure out what the molality is of this. Once we get the molality, we can just plug it into these, those equations, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, and remember, the equation for molality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Okay. Um, so our solute is acetone right there. Okay. And acetone, um, we have 27 grams of it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and write down our 27 grams of acetone, which is C3H6O. Now we need to go ahead and convert it into moles. And we know that carbons, well, we can look it up on the periodic table. Carbon's atomic mass is 
hydrogens is 1.0 and oxygens is 16.0. So if I take 3 times this number plus 6 times this number plus 1 times 16, so I'm going to get 12 times 3, do this in my calculator, plus 1 times 6, 6, plus 1 times 16, that's going to give me 58. So the molar mass for C3H6O is 58 grams per mole, and I would write it like this, 58 grams go on the bottom, so that they cancel with the grams here, and the 1 mole per 1 mole. 1 mole of C3H6O weighs 58 grams. So if you have 27 grams, we take 27, and then we divide by 58. And when you do that, now you end up with 0.4655. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down over here. 0.4655 moles. Okay, so this is going to be the moles for our molality. Now all we need, so we've got that here. There we go. All we need is our kilograms of solvent on the bottom here. 200 grams of water. You can convert that into kilograms fairly easily. Remember to turn grams to kilograms. You just divide by 1,000, or you move the decimal three places to the left. I like to do it this way. One kilogram is 1,000 grams, because I know kilo, the prefix kilo means 1,000. So one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So the grams cancel. 200 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.200 kilograms. Okay, and so there's our uh, kilograms right there. So I got my moles of solute. I got my kilograms of solvent. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this up a little bit so I can go ahead and use these numbers over here. The molality for these solutions will now be 0 0.4655 moles divided by 0 0.200 kilograms. 0 0.4655 divided by 0 0.200 is going to give me 2.12. So I will be at. Uh, here, let me let me get rid of that here. Did I say 2.12. 2.12 moles per kilogram or mole. Well, okay. and that is right there our molality. And you'll recall that the reason why we need molality is if I go back over here and look at the beginning, we needed to find the freezing point depressions and boiling point elevations. And we need molality for both. In fact, once we find the molality, all we do is multiply by these, um, the, these uh, numbers over here by these numbers right here, KF and KB, and once I do that, then I can go ahead and uh, um, uh, plug it into my equation and solve for the answer. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that, uh, use those equations. So I will rewrite the equation down here at the bottom. Here's my molality that I have at this point in time. The change in freezing point, delta Tf, is equal to Kf times the molality. Kf, we said from above, was 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. You'll have to either believe me, remember it, or go back up and check it or 
rewind the video a little bit to check it. But it's 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. The molality is 2.12 molal. And you'll notice that what happens here is I'm going to go ahead and multiply the two numbers together. 1.86. 1.86 multiplied by 2.12. And what that gives me is 3.94. So 3.94, the molality here cancels with the molality here. Right here it's in the denominator of the units, here it's in the numerator, and it leaves me with degrees Celsius. Okay. So what that, this tells me is that here's my freezing point depression. The temperature, uh, the freezing point dropped by um, 3.94. Okay. Um, Where'd that come from? Okay. Um, so the question asked, if I go back up to the, uh, the actual question, let's take a look at this. Didn't ask for a freezing point depression. It says, what will be the freezing point? Okay, so we're not done yet with this part of the question. We're almost there, though. What will be the freezing point? Well, the freezing point was zero. And the freezing point depression, it's, it tells you that it dropped 3.94 from where it started off with, which was zero. Right? So our new freezing point is going to be, our, our new freezing point of our solution is going to be where the original uh, freezing point, so it will be Celsius minus 3.94 degrees Celsius. So if you take 0 minus 3.94, well that's an easy one to calculate, negative 3.94 degrees Celsius. And that is your new freezing point. The solution will freeze almost at minus 4 degrees Celsius, whereas water by itself would freeze at 0 degrees Celsius. Once you put in all this, uh, all this acetone into the um, water, it freezes at negative 4 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's your freezing point depression and your new freezing point. Boiling point elevation, pretty much the same thing, at least uh, procedurally. Let me go ahead and make some more space here. Um, so this one right here, let me go ahead and change this here. I keep having to change the pens and stuff all over the place. Uh, is the boiling point elevation, delta Tb, um, is Kb times molality. And if you remember from above, Kb for water was 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal. So that's your Kb. And you multiply by the molality. Same solution, therefore it has the same molality. And we're changing two properties on it. We're changing the freezing point and the boiling point. In both cases, we use the same molality. So if I take 0 0.512 multiplied by 2.12, multiplied by 2.12, what that's going to give me is 1.08, 1.09. We're getting really nitpicky with the, with the degrees, right? 1.09 degrees Celsius. Now remember, this is a boiling point elevation, so it's going to go up. This is how much it's going to go up. The question, once again, and I'll show you one more time, just like uh, I showed you for the last one, is not what is the boiling point elevation, but it is um, what is its boiling point. Its boiling point. So we want to know the exact boiling point of the solution. So we know the boiling point elevation. That tells us that the boiling point is going to get bigger by 1.09 degrees Celsius. But we need, to, uh, we need to add that to the original boiling point. And for water, the original boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius. So our new boiling point is going to be the old boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius, plus 1.09 degrees Celsius. And therefore, we're going to go ahead and add the two together and get 101.09 degrees Celsius. 
that is your answer for the new boiling point. Okay. So don't get confused between those two things. Um, remember that this right here is your boiling point elevation, how much that boiling point is rising. Your actual boiling point is that number plus the original boiling point. And in the same way, don't get confused with freezing point and freezing point depression, especially with water having a freezing point of zero to begin with, because, well, I know when you have to add, subtract to zero, the numbers look all the same. So the freezing point depression was 3.94 degrees Celsius, which tells you how much the freezing point is dropping by. But the actual freezing point is negative 3.94 degrees Celsius because it started off at zero and then you had to subtract it by this number, by the 3.94. Um, and that then gives you a negative 3.94. That's the answer. Okay. All right. I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, stick around for or click on the other one where we're going to go ahead and figure out how we can use freezing point depression to figure out something like a molar mass. Okay? All right. See you then.